Can I raise this completely dried out gouache palette from the dead? Today we're going to find out. And part of the rating for success on this little project is, can I actually then paint something decent with it? Remember back in 2020 when jelly gouache was all the rage, it looks like candy, I wanted some, I got it, and I kind of ended up hating it. I painted with it a few times and then I closed the lid, however imperfectly, and put it back on the shelf. Yeah, and so a few weeks ago when I wanted to see what was going on under the lid, I was appalled. They look like little colorful rocks, essentially. So come on, let's dig into this massively messy, partially inspirational, and pretty shocking experiment where I'm going to call myself a creative alchemist. So this in total was about a four day process and I'm gonna take you through each step, but a whole lot quicker than they actually took me cause that could get boring. Okay, day one, I popped this lid friends and look at them, like literally you can hear how hard these are. When I tip them over, the, the paint is just crumbling out like little rocks, like, it's just insane. I had no delusions at all at this stage that this was gonna work. But I was like, you know what? I'm feeling sciencey. let's give it a go. So the first thing I did was kind of just dig into one of these little cups with a palette knife. And friends, I will warn you, be careful if you have a palette that looks like this and you're heading in with any type of like sharp instrument because it's gonna fight, it's gonna fight you. It's gonna fight back, so anywho, yeah, things were really rough. It was almost like chalk and glue had combined into little little rotten balls of paint. And uh, yeah, so I started out by spraying them down, which kind of felt fruitless, honestly, like really fruitless, but I did it anyway. Realizing quickly that I needed a whole heck of a lot more than just a spritz. So I started pouring water into these because remember, gouache is like watercolor. It's completely water soluble. It's supposed to kind of re-wet and revive when you dampen it. So my theory here was, well, if I soak it, it should with some love and elbow grease come back to life. Yeah, well, we'll see. Now the next step was to go ahead in and kind of try to break up these little hard rock paint balls going on now that I had some moisture in there. And my thinking was, well, if I can break it up, it'll allow more surface area to kind of absorb the moisture that I'm adding. And I just made sure to clean my palette knife in between each digging session in each cup. I'll be honest, friends, this kind of work is incredibly cathartic, at least for me. It's repetitive and mundane in ways, but at the same time, you're getting a result, a predictable result. I'm breaking up the paint, I'm adding a little more water, I'm cleaning off my palette knife, and repeat. So pop on some music and just have fun with it. Okay, friends, I resealed the box after all that work was done, and I made sure that the water level in each cup was pretty much over the top of all of the paint rocks. I don't know what to call them. And yeah, this box has always given me trouble with resealing. It's probably part of the reason that this paint looks like it does now. Uh, yeah, you can, you can see here, I'm totally on the struggle bus. Anybody else have an old school Hemi palette like mine that just wouldn't seal like you thought it was supposed to? Let me know in comments. And also let me know if you have this palette and do you love it? Do you hate it? Let's get that conversation going. And honestly, while I'm struggling through trying to get this to fit, friends, if you're having fun and you think I'm ridiculous and you find this at least moderately entertaining, or maybe you're just really looking forward to see if I actually can make this happen, would you go ahead and give this video a boop, friends? That's a like, and it really helps out my channel. Okay, but in all seriousness, I did all the things, closed that bad boy up to the best of my ability and let her soak overnight. Like I'm talking, a full like at least 15 hours yeah and here we are day two i'm feeling pretty confident things didn't get as messy as i thought they would yesterday and yeah let's get back into it i'm actually really excited to, at this point to pop the lid again and uh see what's going on underneath digging in here right off the bat because i'm so curious into this orange cup 
and definitely isn't as liquidy or pasty at least. I mean, let's be honest. I didn't think it was gonna be back to like the syrupy liquid form that it should be, but yeah, it, it wasn't as pasty as I thought. So here I am with that silly spray bottle again, thinking a spritz is gonna do it. Yeah, not so much. All right, we're gonna just go ahead and pour some more water in here. And I'm realizing really quickly at this point that we're gonna have to like do the whole first process again. That's fine, it's fine though. I got other projects I can go to. Yeah, it's fine. So literally just repeating day one. Now friends, let me know, did you think this was gonna happen? Like, were you like, Christy, you didn't think you were gonna get this all accomplished in one soaking, in one overnight? Let me know in comments, let me have it, I gotta hear it, yeah. All right friends, now remember, I am hopeful here that this paint is going to come back to life and I am going to try and paint with it. So first thing to remember is that when I first bought this palette, when it was fresh and pure and beautiful and perfect, I didn't really care too much for the gouache. I'll be honest, I'm used to using Windsor & Newton gouache and it's, you know, in my opinion, one of the best, but a very different texture. And so that threw me. And uh, number two, I'm not expecting much. Now the second thing to know or remember is that I'm feeling like I didn't give this set a fair shake back when I first used it. So I still remain pretty hopeful that I'm gonna be able to make something out of this that I'm actually pretty excited about. But you know, we'll see. Also, I've been watching some videos of other artists who are way more experienced with gouache than I am. And uh, I feel like I've picked up a few pointers, a few tips, a few tricks, a few hacks. Okay, I'll stop. But friends, if you are curious about gouache, I actually have a gouache watercolor comparison. I'm gonna link that video below. It's definitely one to bookmark to watch later. All right, now I'm wrapping up this day two, which is a repeat of day one. And I am making sure that before I close the lid, these are all really nicely filled with water right to the top and that all of the paint is underneath the water, really important. It's day three and now I finally figured out how to get this lid on properly. It just took a little bit of zhuzhin and you know, elbow grease, but I was really excited about it that I was getting more of an airtight seal. Okay, things are looking much more exciting at this point. Uh, the paint is actually taking on a little semblance of its original kind of jelly vibe. I'm having to siphon off the, the grossness from the white cup again, but I'm okay with that. I'm still feeling okay and confident. Okay, so I picked up some tools, the first of which are these super dupes cute little kitty cat tiny tongs. And uh, yeah, I just saw someone on the YouTube using them because we gotta take all of these cups out so that we can actually clean the palette box as well, right? So the kitty cat tongs just felt super necessary. Um, actually, they just felt super cute and wholly unnecessary, but no one's gonna judge me, right? Yeah, they didn't actually work too well either. I ended up using my fingernail and then the tongs, really didn't need the tongs, but whatever, it looks cute. Okay, so we're gonna get all of these out of here so that we can work on each one individually. That's our first goal. And then our second goal is to actually like sanitize, scour, clean up this box. There's already something so incredibly satisfying about seeing all these cups out of the palette box on their own in a grid. Uh, yeah, this is good fun. I don't know about you, but do you, are you the kind of like person that thinks this is fun? If you're my people, let's get into comments and let's just, you know, cheer each other on. Cause this just, this is fun. I don't know. I'm weird. Okay. Moving on. I'm pretty excited. I got another fancy tool and yeah, here's me trying to figure it out. Basically it's like a mini like frother. Yeah. Um, a little unpredictable. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I have it connected properly, um, but yeah, so it, um, don't worry, I'm gonna link all of the supplies below because I do think it's gonna be super dupes helpful once I figure out how to put it together. So yeah, it's basically like a gouache mixer. Like you can literally search that like gouache stir mixer on Amazon and it comes up the coolest little thing and it was super dupes cheap. So I think it's gonna work out well decided to go ahead and use the lid of my paint box as my working surface because it's already a mess and I know I can wash it. And I am digging into this first cup and this mixer, she's not moving y'all. 
she's not moving. I don't understand. I'm doing something wrong. The, the paint is broken up. It's kind of soft and it's well beyond. Now there's that big hunk in there. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know. I, I'm starting to get nervous because things are starting to get crazy messy, but I'm going to keep going with it. I'm going to keep going with it. So I'm going to get this like hunk of love out of here and hopefully then be able to get back to the cup and get some mixing action going on. But we'll see. Okay, I, I, I don't know. I was just feeling like I needed a clean surface. So here comes a paper towel and I'm probably gonna put down a fresh paper towel in between each cup as I work through the whole palette. So, all right, I'm gonna mix this up some more and really get you know all that paint and the water moving and grooving and back to the mixer. I It's still, okay, oh, it's starting to move. It's starting to move. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Like you knew that was gonna happen. You knew that was gonna happen. Okay, friends, I have orange paint everywhere. It's on my windows, it's on the floor, it's everywhere. I am bringing out my kitchen apron and cause I'm not doing this the dirty way. I'm not doing this, I'm putting on the apron because this is cray. This is cray, I'm fine getting dirty, but like I got some nice, nice clothes on. So gosh, watercolor artists are just not used to this kind of mess, okay? But we'll keep moving, I'm, I'm here for it. Y'all, there is orange paint everywhere, but I'm excited because it's actually working. But what I think I need to do is really get some more water in there. I think that's the trick, let's find out. Okay, so here's what's working. Moving on to the next cup, I am pulling out any big chunks. Then I'm adding some more water. Notice I've switched the little blending blade on this one. I'm using the other one that doesn't look like a square. And I'm, okay, moving the chunks, switch the blade, spritzing. I'm spritzing more water in there. And I'm spritzing until that little mixer starts to move. And I keep spritzing and this is working. Just, just keep it down in. This is kind of like mixing a cake. You don't want to lift up those, you know, those mixers or they're just going to splatter everywhere as I learned the hard way. And this is the process. This is working. So number one, get the big clumps of yuck out. You can always slowly add them back in and reconstitute them. Number two, spritz, spritz, spritz until that mixer starts moving and presto. It's working, yay! All right, friends, let's take a look and see how the white is gonna do. This is the one I'm most worried about. It's contaminated with a lot of other colors. It's got some weird settling happening and I just don't know if I can bring this back. All right, I'm going in with my clean palette knife and I'm just breaking it up, breaking it up, spritzing it down, spritzing it down. I am just going to, I didn't siphon out that dirty kind of dirty water. I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference because it's so like low saturation. I am trying to clean up these edges with the edge of my palette knife because they could potentially contaminate things. So I'm gonna get that all cleaned up and wiped down. Something else that I'm doing as I'm working is some of the original like sealing film that was on each of these cups is still remaining. I remember it being really difficult to get off when I first picked up this palette and I got super frustrated, like I could not get it off. And even at this point, I'm having to use the sharp edge of a palette knife to kind of scrape it off. But once and for all, I'm getting that film completely off. I'm shocked, friends. I gotta say, this white is coming back like a champ, like a champ. Look at that, gorgeous. I am feeling really positive about this, friends. I actually think it might work, but we've got a lot more colors to go, but you know what? I'm not gonna make you sit through this. I'm just gonna let you watch the sped up version because it's actually kind of cool to see it all sped up and then we're gonna paint so soon. All right, so friends, here is what I've learned by going through this process, and hopefully this helps you out. Remember, stick around because we, we're gonna be, I know I keep saying it, we're, we're gonna be painting soon. Number one, prepare your space because I didn't. I was 
very ill prepared mentally and physically for the absolute mess that this created. It's a well worthy mess, but prepare your space. You know, clear off your desk, cover things you don't want to get covered in paint. Even if you're a less crazy, messy person in a studio than I am, it's gonna get crazy up in here, so be prepared. Number two, have the right tools. I think a palette knife is really helpful. If you don't have a palette knife, like a small butter knife would be super awesome. Is that little hand mixer necessary? No, but for the like six bucks that it costs, it's a lifesaver. And I've been using a continuous spray bottle, friends. It's new to me, I'm loving it. And it makes such a difference in this particular process because you are constantly spraying and respraying and just spraying with one hand and using the other hand. So super helpful. Number three, have lots, and I mean lots of paper towels or clean rags and a place to throw them when they're completely dripping with mess. And number four, for the love, just wear an apron from the get go. And I don't know, maybe a shower cap too. <laughs> So let's get into this painting because I feel like the struggle bus that was the process to get here doesn't necessarily have to dictate the end result of the painting. Now I've decided that this really isn't the time and place for me to give you a point by point how to because really this video is about just figuring out how to resurrect these paints and accomplish something with them. But if you would like to see the exact how-to for this particular painting, let me know in comments and I'll get right to it. What I do have as you watch this painting unfold are a bunch of tips and tricks when it comes to painting with gouache. I've been painting with gouache since high school and I adore it. So yeah, let's just see where this one takes us. I'll let you know if there've been any frustration points and uh, yeah, let's watch this happy painting unfold. So if you know anything about Himi gouache, it's definitely a student grade in terms of quality. But I actually find it really fun to paint with. And the thing that you need to know about it when you're using it is you need to use just the right amount of water because it can be a little persnickety when it comes to flow. But of course, when you're using gouache, you want that opacity. So adding a ton of water is gonna take away the opacity. So it's always like a balancing act with this particular brand, just something to keep in mind. Now, you know I'm all about breaking the rules, but one rule that I tend to stick to when it comes to painting with gouache is starting with thinner layers. I find it difficult if you go right in with thick layers and then try to layer on top of those thick layers because then you start to pick up the paint underneath when the moisture hits it. So start thin, build up to thicker layers. Another bit of advice for using gouache number two, this is my number two tip, is to also build up in terms of lightness. So I often start fairly dark and then build up the lightness on top of the dark. Now, of course, there's nothing that says you can't go the opposite way because either way you go, you could potentially be disturbing the color underneath with the wet color you add on top. But again, this is where water control and gouache really come in handy and play a super important role. Number three, this is my tip. Is it really a tip or just a suggestion or just, a, I don't know. But I get asked the question all the time, can I use my watercolor brushes for gouache? Absolutely, absolutely. Any good watercolor brush worth its salt should stand up to the heavier body of gouache. Now, you might wanna be extra careful with the second or third rinse, but to be honest, gouache 
is water soluble. So it's not gonna ruin your brush if you accidentally, once in a while, forget to thoroughly rinse. Now, one of the drawbacks of this set that I encountered very early on after purchase was the fact that it kind of separates and it does dry out over time, even if you have that perfect seal and connection from the lid. So what I've heard out and about in Artland is that people are opening that lid once a week or twice a month and they are spritzing down their jelly gouache, which can kind of be a little annoying. Like they're super high maintenance, I feel like. But at the same time, the price is right. You're getting a lot of paint for your money. And once you get the water thing and the water handling down, they're really a great paint to use in gouache land. Okay, let me know if you're still here enjoying this little trip down the uh, gouache revival path. Uh, yeah, it's been a wild ride, but I'm kind of feeling the strawberries. If you are heading to comments, let me know yay or nay. You won't hurt my feelings. And while you're at it, I would appreciate a boop, friends. That's a like, and that means that you're here and you're supporting this channel and that you want other people to be here supporting this channel. And now if this particular video has piqued your interest about gouache and you wanna know more about the differences between watercolor and gouache, well, you need to watch this video next. And until next time, I wish you some super duper happy gouache painting.